let's continue three, four, and we're gonna practice that rational zero theorem. Um, so again, if we do have rational zeros, they'll fit this pattern. So in this example, uh, my a zero will be three, a zero is the constant term, and my a n is the leading term of six. And we wanna find all rational zeros of six x to the fourth minus five x cubed minus two x squared minus eight x plus three and what we know is it has at most four zeros for the degree of four at most four rational zeros quick, quick correction uh, but if we do have zeros they'll fit this pattern um, so factors of three go on top so that would be three or one, right? Those are the only numbers that go into three. And then the denominator is gonna get a little messy. Um, we're gonna have six, three, two, or one for factors of six. And so we're gonna have a lot of options. So we're just gonna start dividing everything. So. Let's do everything over one first, just because one's easier. So three over one, everything is plus or minus, we'll add that after. One over one, and then we'll do three over two, one over two. Some of these will be duplicates, which you'll see in a second. And then we'll do three over three, one over three. And then we'll do three over six and one over six. So a lot of options. Um, let's go through them. There are some duplicates, I promise. So plus or minus three, plus or minus one, plus or minus three halves, plus or minus one half. Just kind of going through them all. Three over three would be one. So that one's already been counted. All right, those are the same. One third, plus or minus one third. 3 over 6 is 1 half, so we've already included that, luckily. And then we get 1 6. All right, so if we have a rational 0, it fits this pattern. So now, um, this is where guessing and checking by plugging in will save us some time. So we don't have to do long division for all of them. So let's just start plugging some in and see what we get. Um, so what do we want to do first? I don't know. Three? If you know how to use tables on the calculator um, or on Excel or anything, there's definitely ways to plug in numbers faster. But otherwise, we'll do it this way. Um, just plugging in three. Just to check if it is a zero and three is not a zero. Negative three. This is a little tedious, I know. Uh, just if you're using your phone, download an app rather than um, using the like free app, like the iPhone calculator, it's messy. There's lots of free apps on the phone that are slightly better. Oops, I made a typo in three, but I know for a fact three is not a zero. 6.30 now. So I just noticed a typo for three. I did five instead of eight, which doesn't make a huge difference because I know it doesn't work. Yeah, 312. All right, and then you could plug a bunch in. I'm going to jump ahead because I know which ones work. So let's try one third. So six times one third, oops. All right, we plug a bunch in until one works to the fourth minus five to the one third cubed minus two times one third squared. Sometimes you get lucky and find the zero right away. Other times it takes a while. And then plus three, yay, one third is a zero. So we'll do long division with one third. So that means x minus one third is a factor and one third is a zero. So we'll put one third on the outside and we'll put the coefficients on the inside. Six, negative five, negative two, negative eight, and three. 
So six, what do we get? Six times one third is two, we get negative three. One third times negative three is negative one, negative three, so we get negative one again. I'm gonna start doing this faster because we've been practicing negative nine, and then we multiply and we get negative three and we get zero. So this better be zero if it's a zero. And then let's see, now we started with x to the fourth. So this will be x cubed, which means we can't quite jump to the quadratic formula. We're gonna have to guess and check zeros again. So we cannot, we have to keep doing synthetic until we get down to x squared. So we gotta try one more time. So let's call, plug a couple more in. Um, so we got one third. It's possible that one third would work again because um, it could be multiplicity too. So something we might check is if I divide one third again, does it work? So if something has a multiplicity of two, you should be able to divide it twice. So we get six, one third times six brings me to two, negative one, negative one third. This isn't looking good. Um, negative three minus one third, what's that? 10 thirds. And then we get negative, okay, this is not a zero. Whatever this is, right, this is not zero. So one third does not have multiplicity. So we'll have to find another one. Um, so let's guess and check again. I'm gonna jump to three halves just for the sake of the lecture. Um, if you are using this calculator, you can hit second enter and change all the one thirds to three halves. Most scientific calculators will have this option. And then this is just an app on my iPad, so there are other options on your phone. Anything works. Cool. So three halves is also a zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna divide three halves into the new polynomial because I'm trying to like get down to an x squared term. So we already know x minus one third, and then we're gonna do three halves into the x cubed function. So as we divide down, we're gonna divide into the next function. Um, so what do we get? We get six. Six times three halves is nine, and we get six again. Six times three halves is nine, and we get six again, and then we get nine and we get zero. Right, so the whole goal is this is zero, and we got kind of an evil function, I guess, with all the sixes. So x minus one third, x minus three halves, and then the last one will be now six x squared plus six x plus six. And now that we're at a quadratic, we can go ahead and factor or use the quadratic formula. Um, I noticed they all have a six in common, so why not factor it out? So x squared plus x plus one. So my a, b, and c are all one and we'll use the quadratic formula. Um, we can't factor this. So we get x equals negative b, so negative one plus or minus one squared minus four ac, which is one and one, all over two times one. So we get one minus four, we get negative three over two. And so this is not rational. Right, this would be negative one square root three i. So this is not rational. So our only rational zeros are one third and three halves. And then we have two more zeros and they're complex. So we had less than four zeros, we only had two, right? We'll always have at most four. So it's a lot, it just, it's gonna feel tedious because there's so many zeros to check. And if you were doing this on your own, it may, may have taken you a while to find one third or three halves. Um, just be patient, you'll get there. All right, I'll see you in the next video.